What's going on everybody, Baird here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to revisit the Tonewinner AT300 13.3 channel Dolby Atmos processor, which is on the budget side of things, so that is fantastic to see. I did do a review about a year ago, maybe a little over, which I'll link in the top right-hand corner of this video. But today, we just wanna kinda see where things have gone. Uh, do I still feel the same way about the sound quality? Is it better? How is the room calibration software? I did also do a demo video, which I'll link in the top right-hand corner. I know that some of you do like demos and some of you don't. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna put it in a separate video. So if you do wanna see the demos, you can click on that after watching this video. And in those demos, I will show you how it sounds with the room calibration and without the room calibration. So you can kind of compare and see for yourself. And while we're on the subject of the room calibration software, we might as well start there and talk about it. In my review, I believe I said it's either, if you're looking for a top tier or a world-class room calibration, um, this isn't it. Uh, so has that changed? Well, let's talk about that. Um, I did run the room calibration software, obviously, and it is very easy to run. Uh, it does include a very nice microphone with an XLR cable that uh, uses an adapter to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that you plug in the back of the unit. Um, so the the room calibration software is very easy to use and it's very efficient. So one thing I want to point out with the room calibration uh, software in the Tone Winner is it is proprietary to Tone Winner. Uh, so it's their own thing uh, running separately from uh, the likes of, uh, you know, Odyssey XT32, Anthem Room Correction or Dirac. Um, and it only takes measurements in one spot. The other three that I mentioned, Odyssey, Anthem Room Correction and Dirac, they take... Um, readings or measurements from different spots to try and provide a more smooth response over how wide of an area that you want. A lot of them you can choose um, how many measurements that you want based on how many seats that you have to try and kind of smooth out the response over a wider area. Whereas the tone winner, as far as I can tell, it only takes readings from the main listening position. So you're going to get the best response at the main listening position. And what I found with the room calibration software is that uh, it's kind of similar to Marantz or Denon when it comes to the bass presentation. It is a heavier handed, kind of thicker bass presentation than something like Anthem Room Correction or Dirac. Which I've heard complaints, and I personally have some of those complaints, how they, they make the bass, um, yes, it's tight and, and accurate, but it's almost anemic in ways, so a lot of people choose to turn up the bass after Anthem Room Correction or after Dirac. Uh, in this case, I don't think that's the case. If anything, you would have might have to turn it down a little bit. So they do kind of go to the other end of the spectrum where they provide you a lot of bass. So bass heads out there, you're probably going to like this room calibration software and the, the stock sound of this unit in general because it is a little bit bass heavy. But the fantastic thing is, for those of you that aren't bass heads, you can easily EQ that, you can turn the bass down, uh, there's adjustments that you can make, and it does even have uh, an EQ that you can personally uh, adjust if you wish. With that being said, uh, it does sound good with the room calibration software. Is it the best? No, it's not the best. It's not going to uh, outperform Anthem Room Correction or Dirac. But it's not bad either, especially when you're looking at a budget processor that comes with its own proprietary uh, room calibration software. It's not bad. It, it does uh, benefit the sound, I would say. It does more good than bad, uh, especially when it comes to the bass. So when it comes to the bass, uh, my room, I do struggle to get a flat response in my room. Uh, even with the likes of the Anthem AVM90, which is far more expensive than the Tone Winner or the Emotiva RMC1 or the Anthem AVM70, all of them kind of struggled with my room to give me a flat response at my main listening position. And it's not that the tone winner gave it a perfect response, like it's bored flat or anything, but I have to admit that when it comes to a bass response in my room, the tone winner has done the best out of all the previous processors that I just mentioned, all of them being far more expensive than the tone winner. So take that for what you will, guys, but let's jump over to my computer and I can show you the room measurements that I took of the tone winner uh, without the room calibration and with the room calibration. And I did that with uh, the single subs individually as well as both subs together. And just for fun, I did throw in the Anthem AVM90 response to show you guys that yes, the tone winner does seem to do a little bit better than even a processor that costs much, much more. All right, guys, so here we are on my computer and I already have Roo pulled up. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at the tone winner measurements with no room calibration and with room calibration. So first things first, let's have a look at the front right subwoofer with no room calibration and the front right subwoofer with room calibration. Now I want you to completely ignore 
uh, the volumes of each or the SPL of each because I didn't really care about the SPL. What we're looking for is just a flat response. So with the room calibration, you can see it kind of looks off. Uh, but this is because it's trying to match up both subwoofers together and not just one subwoofer. So it actually kind of looks a little bit better when looking at the single subwoofer and looks off when you're looking at the room calibration. But when you combine the two, uh, you'll see that it actually did a pretty good job of combining the two subwoofers. But this is the front left subwoofer without room calibration. This is the front left subwoofer with room calibration. So again, it looks a bit off. You get this dip here. But when we combine them, it actually did a pretty good job, better than a lot of my other processors in the past. So here is both subwoofers. And these are JTR Captivator 2400s, by the way. Uh, both subwoofers without room calibration. But here it is with both subwoofers with room calibration. So you still have a little bit of a dip here, but I imagine that's because I have my speakers um, crossed over at 80 hertz. So you are going to lose a little bit of decibels here. But let's look just even just from here back. You still do have a dip here, uh, but it hasn't proved it. Uh, like if you put a trend line here, say starting at 10 hertz, the room calibration is flatter and it does kind of put a little bit of a room or um, yeah, it puts a little bit of a house curve on the sound uh, so it does drop the high end a little bit so I, I imagine that that's built into the room calibration software but even this big null right here it did bring it up it's not perfect of course but it did bring it up um, and it for some reason it did create a bit of a null here uh, which I'm guessing has is a result of this dip in the red line here but overall I would say that the tone winner has done the best job in getting a flat response for my bass from all the processors and just to kind of to show that, this is what the AVM90 did with ARC. So Anthem Room Correction, AVM90. It's not bad. Uh, like, as you can see here, it kind of does have a big dip, whereas this one doesn't. Um, and here it's got a bit of a peak, whereas this one has a bit of a null. But overall, you kind of get this big hump over here, you know, from 15 to 10 hertz where the tone winner leveled that out nicely. I'm not sure what Anthem was doing here, but it only does, Anthem does only calibrate down to 15 hertz. So I'm guessing that that has something to do with why we have this hump here. But I would say overall, the tone winner has the flatter response here when you compare the two. Um, so the room calibration is has come a long way, I would say. It's, it's doing a fairly good job in calibrating the bass. Uh, but that kind of sums it up, guys. That's what it looks like uh, without room calibration, and that's what it looks like with room calibration. So it did a pretty good job of calibrating my bass, uh, especially when you're considering uh, a more expensive Anthem room correction was still struggling. And again, guys, I want to point out that this has a lot to do with my room. My subs are not optimally placed, um, but they are placed where I have room. I'm, I might try and move them in the future, but right now uh, my room is difficult to EQ, so all in all, they all did a pretty good job, but I would say overall, the flattest response is the Tone Winner AT300. All right, let's move on with the review. All right, so that kind of sums up the, the room calibration, and as I showed the, the room measurements, it does some things better and some things not as good as some of the more expensive room calibration softwares. But for those of you out there that aren't really looking for perfection, or you have a, a nicely treated room, or maybe you want to use Dirac with a mini DSP, that's also options with this unit. But I also want to point out that this unit does sound pretty good without the room calibration software, which we'll talk about in just a second here. I will say again uh, that this unit does remind me or is reminiscent of Denon and Marantz uh, style sound. Uh, it's a little bit warmer, a little bit, a little bit richer. Like I said, that richness, um, a little bit bass heavy, which I did find when I had the Marantz AV7706 as well as my Denon uh, AVR X4400. So if you are accustomed to Denon sound or Marantz sound, I would say that this is something a little bit closer to those. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, Based on memory, I would say that with the new updates and firmware updates on this unit, it's probably pretty close to on par, maybe in some ways slightly better than the Marantz AV7706. But it's definitely better than the Denon AVR-X4400 because I remember it 
being better even before all the firmware updates um, than my 4400 back about a year ago. But now let's talk about how it sounds in general, just kind of how the unit sounds without uh, room calibration. Like I said, I did do a demo video. I'll link that in the top right hand corner. You can hear it with and without uh, room calibration and kind of hear the sound for yourself. Um, but in this video, we just want to talk about it. So when it comes to the bass sound of this unit, uh, I kind of already touched on this. It is a little bit on the heavier handed side for bass, reminiscent of Marantz or Denon, a little bit richer in the mid-range, uh, just a richer sound in general, I guess, a little bit of a warmer sound in general, which some people may prefer, some people may not. With that being said, though, don't take that as it's not detailed. Um, this unit is surprisingly detailed. It sounds surprisingly crisp. Channel separation and clarity are actually very well done here. Uh, like I said, I would say it's leaning towards being on par, if not better than the Marantz AV7706 when it comes to clarity and channel separation. And that's not uh, to knock the Marantz AV7706. It's just to say that this unit is offering you a fantastic value. So for instance, when I was listening to the Dolby Atmos Leaf demo, uh, right at the end of the video, there's some water sounds that are just kind of like rustling water that um, I know have been there. Like I, I know that they're there, but I'm just, I was just sitting there listening, going, you know, going through my demos. And at the end of that demo, I'm like, wait a second, I'm hearing a lot more of that water than what I'm used to listening to. Um, now that could just be the, you know, the way the, the DAC is presenting the sound, or I'm, I'm not sure if it's necessarily presenting it in any more detail than what was there before. But I want to say, I want to point out that it was more noticeable. Like I could hear it more. It was just this nice, clear, clean, rustling water sound, like almost like a running creek uh, that I never really heard as pronounced before. I don't know what to attribute that to, but I'm just pointing out what I heard. And another thing, for instance, uh, when I'm listening to, I believe it's called Nature's Fury. It's a Dolby Atmos demo as well that I listen to on my uh, Xbox Series X. It's one of the uh, one my go-to demos just because it's available on uh, the Dolby app on the uh, Xbox Series X. But there's a part in that demo where there's uh, a plane kind of flying overhead. And again, uh, I've always heard it before. I know it's there. I've heard it a million times before. I do feel like it was a little bit more pronounced uh, with the tone winner than some of my past processors, um, especially when it moved to behind me. You know, I always kind of heard it flying over me, but when it came to like when it went to the back, I did hear it a little bit more prominently than what I've heard in the past. But that's not to say that everything on the tone winner sounds more crisp and clean than even something like the AVM90 or the Emotiva. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm pointing out is things that I did hear that did sound different versus some of the past processors. I can't say that the tone winner, of course, has the same clarity and, and, and level of channel separation as the AVM90. That thing is far more expensive, and of course, it should sound better, and it does. Uh, there's definitely some more clarity there. There's definitely some more channel separation there. And when talking about the uh, Emotiva RMC1L that I have here uh, running Dirac, again, it's using a, a DAC per channel. It's fully differential on each of its 16 channels. Sound-wise, I will say it's more crisp, more clean. It's sharp around the edges, though, uh, much sharper. It's almost, it's very analytical, I would say, the Emotiva uh, versus something even like the AVM90, which does have, uh, you know, a lot of detail, a lot of clarity, but I'd say it's a little bit smoother, a little bit more refined sound. Uh, the Emotiva is, you know, sounds fantastic for its price as well. Um, I was surprised, actually very impressed by the sound quality of the Emotiva, but it is a little bit sharper around the edges, a little bit more analytical The than, and than the Tone Winner as well. So the Tone Winner, like I said, it kind of falls in line with somewhere around the Marantz AV7706 when it comes to the sound quality. Um, for the price, I, I very highly doubt you're going to be disappointed in the sound quality of this unit, especially when you're spending, you know, this amount of money, you could probably get this processor along with either, you know, a tone winner amp or an outlaw amp or, you know, a budget line of amplification. You could probably get this processor plus an amp for the cost of even like the Marantz AV7706 or something more expensive. So you could probably save yourself some money plus get your amplification and, and have phenomenal sound. For those of you looking for perfection though, you're not going to find that in the budget in the budget realm at all anyway. doesn't matter what you buy, that's budget. Um, so if you're looking for me to sit here and tell you that this is going to compete with an Anthem AVM90 or even something, you know, two or three times the price of it, it's not going to be as good. That's just cold hard facts. That's just plain and simple how it's going to be. 
But if you're looking for something that's going to provide you above average sound quality that is going to be good enough for probably like 98% of consumers out there, uh, this is it. If you're, if you're trying to save some money and you want to have great sound quality, this is probably a processor that you should be looking at. They've come a long way when it comes to usability and the, the functionality of it. Even when I used it before, like when, a year ago when I was using it, everything seemed to function very well. It was very smooth. Uh, HDMI switches were, you know, not the fastest on the market, but they, you know, it switched well. It was efficient. It switched every time. I don't remember ever having a time where I switched a source and it didn't actually work, uh, which I can't say for some of my other units. Um, I'm not going <laughs> to name any names here, but there are some units that it's a struggle. It's a real struggle. And they're more expensive than this one. So yes, the menu is still outdated. It's still, that hasn't changed. The menu does look a little outdated, but I also have the Emotiva here, which the menu looks very outdated as well. You're not going to get some fancy web UI like with the Anthem AVM90 or AVM70, but it works and it just works well. It doesn't look the prettiest and it does have a lot of functionality. Like you have your own EQ. There's a lot of settings there that you can change. There's a lot of functionality involved or in, in incorporated into this unit just with a pretty plain Jane looking uh, menu setup or on-screen display. But when you press a button, it's going to register. When you change something, it's going to register. I haven't had it freeze up at all. I haven't had any lag. I haven't had... Th there's just nothing I can point out on the functionality side of things other than the look of it that is negative. It, it works very well. It's very smooth. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was trying to do a sound comparison between my Tone Winner 81 PA amplifier and a Macintosh amplifier with a friend of mine that, you know, was gracious enough to drive about an hour and a half with that monster of a Macintosh amp in a box that's basically a crate because it's so heavy. And we, we we're going to do some sound comparisons with uh, using the Emotiva processor and those amplifiers. And we ran into some some hiccups where we had center image drift and we had um, SPL issues where if we switched to preset two back to preset one, even though we hadn't changed the volume, we were losing, I would say, at least 6 dB. So it's, it's a bug within the Emotiva, which, you know, I'm working with them to fix that. But my point being is we had to switch to the tone winner to get something a little bit more reliable which is saying a lot for something that's on the budget side of things. So to sum up my revisit on the review of the AT300, it's still a fantastic all-around unit. Um, it's not going to be necessarily for somebody that is looking for a processor that's basically going to do the work for you. It's not going to walk you through how to set your distances. It's not going to walk you through how to run the room calibration software. But chances are, if you're buying this in North America, you're going to be getting it from Amir at Summit Hi-Fi. And guys, he's just awesome to deal with. He's not going to leave you hanging and say, figure it out. He's going to help you out. He also has some tools on his website. He has the firmware updates on his website. Um, he's, he's going to help you out with this. So it's not going to be like you're left on your own. But at the same time, it's not one of those user-friendly walk you through, click this, go here, click on this, change this. It's not one of those. You're going to have to do it on your own. So if you are looking for Adobe Atmos DTSX, you know, 13 channel, well, it's 13 speaker channels and three subwoofer channels. Uh, if you are looking for that and you are looking to save some money, you guys, this is, in my opinion, this is probably the best option. Don't expect perfection. Like I said, there, there's going to be a little bit of tweaking involved. But if you're just looking for something that's going to sound better than your average Denon AVR, somewhere on par with the Marantz AV7706, and you want to save some money, it's a great option. It really is a great option. I've found myself using this, like I said, over the Emotiva. I'm not trying to slam Emotiva. They have a fantastic sound, but not quite as reliable as a Tone Winner at this point. So there you have it, guys. That is my re-review of the Tone Winner AT300 processor. I've dropped links down in the description below if you would like to check it out. And if you've stuck around this long in the video, you might as well consider subscribing. Tick the bell icon if you do, and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I always do appreciate it, but just remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.